welcome to Black Irish Podcast. <laughs> Welcome to an all new episode of Black Irish Podcast with myself, Brendan McCorkle, and Mike is all right, Crawford. What's up, buddy boy? What up, my guy? How are you today, man? I'm doing all right. I got a special guest with me. My dog Rocco is here. He is not doing so Rocco. well. He's got a big old lump on the side of his throat that's getting bigger and smaller, and it's back to being big, and he's not eating for like three days in a row. It's not good. Not oh, good. I the part about the lump. Yeah, well, when you take him to the vet, man. Tomorrow. We took him once already. I took him once to get it, like, a sample on it. And they're like, we don't know what it is. We couldn't get to the thing. There's, like, a lump. Then there's whatever it is. And then his throat. And we couldn't get through the thing. So we're gonna. I'm going to take him to a different vet to see what we got to do. Uh, it's, we're going to have to biopsy it. it either basically... It's, you know, we're assuming it's one of two things. It's either like something got in there, like a splinter or a metal shard or something, and it just got infected. Or worst case scenario, it's like a tumor or something like that. And who knows? And then it's a dog. He's he's like, he's part of our family. But at what point? He's old. He's 11. Like, at what point is the quality of life? Like, do you just have surgeries for the next three years? Or is it like, hey, we just make it as comfortable as we can have, for a year? I don't want to have, well, like, I don't want you to keep having to do surgery, but I ain't just going to give up on you either. So I know. I it's know. a tough. You know what the doctor says. Yeah. Because he's old. He's 11. He's old. So, I don't know. He's a pit bull, Dalmatian, and terrier mix. Like, this is, he's, he's had a good run. But I think he's still got more life in him. He's just, you know, he's got to be able to eat. I think it just hurts him too much. He's like, fuck that. I'm not doing that. Hopefully something just got in there and it's just affecting the abscess. Maybe you need a tooth pulled or something. I mean, I've held mine swollen up and it wasn't. It was that. That's what it was. Maybe stop drinking out of the toilet. Who? You. I put my face no nail nowhere near a toilet, bro. That, that was disgusting. But I did see like hilarious TikTok involving the toilet the other day that like had me dying laughing. What happened? Like, a guy, I guess his girlfriend cheated on him. Most of these TikToks are fucking set up, I believe. Like it's just set up yeah. and they're trying to get clicks and views and shit. But my guy walks in the bathroom, lifts up the toilet seat, and there's a message on it from <laughs> another guy like, yo, your wife's cheating on you, such and such and such and such. Look in the basket. In the basket, he had wrote another note on, like, toilet paper about where he – because he left his boxes and where he can find them. Oh, my god! And gosh. so he followed the direction, went and found the boxes and put his girlfriend out. Or whatever. <laughs> but I'm like, this shit was set up, but it was pretty funny. And he didn't think about it when he said toilet. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the reality TV, you know. Everything's produced. What's they just make it like, day? oh. We should thought some bidet since we're on toilet. We've right already bidet. we've had a whole episode on this before. I love a bidet. I have a bidet. I've so much as thought about when I start traveling for comedy. Like, can I just bring an extension cord and a bidet with me and just because I'm I'm quick on it. Like, I'm a handy fellow. I can bring a wrench, a screwdriver, a bidet, and a, an electrical cord. And I can in any hotel in America, I can have my own personal bidet. Hey. I've seen that's crossed my mind. Like have recording equipment on the bottom of a suitcase, then like a nice little plasticky layer, and then bidet in a separate little compartment. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows the possibilities? Were you freaked out when the COVID thing happened and everybody was licking toilet seats like that was a good idea even if there wasn't COVID? Yeah, I wasn't freaked out because I knew I would no, be nowhere around people who did dumbass shit like that. 
how dumb I'd you have to be? Would you ever you know, date like, somebody oh, that did that? No. <laughs> I don't want to be within 50 feet of someone who did that. And it's not about you licking the toilet seat. You're just a complete idiot. Like, you're just dumb. <laughs> like, no second chance, no redemption for that amount of stupidity. No. Just like the people who were cooking chicken and, like, uh, cough syrup. What? What? Shut up, you dumbass. Like, you should be smacked for being dumb. Yeah, but the chicken and cough syrup thing is they're just trying to get fucked up. At least you're tr- you're no, they get- were, you're getting they something. Were out of it. They were they were using cough syrup as marinade, but cough syrup has chemicals in it. So when you cook it, guess what? You're killing yourself, sniffing in those cooking chemicals. You dumbass. People are just fucking idiots. Well, I faded paid really quick when the doctors told him that dumbass. Shit. Well, uh, l- let me ask you this because I saw a commercial regarding COVID boosters recently. And I want to ask you how you feel about it because it was who was doing it. John Legend is in this COVID booster commercial. Let me ask you just straight up. No beating around the bush here. Is John Legend considered black still? Yeah. Really? He is yeah. He is dancing. He is yeah. like the lightest brown egg in the dozen, man. Cracks real yeah, easy. You're like, ooh, I don't know, man. You're tippy toeing here. We still got, we still got a lot of love for John Legend over here because he's he done, done some things. You know what I'm saying? In, in the in the in the hardest of the hardest black community that can't take back. He's from Chicago, man. Like, yeah. To try to go help Chicagoans, you got a whole nother type of respect for you because you could literally be out there trying to help them and get your whole life taken from you. So. When you're helping Chicago, that's why people haven't cut Kanye off. Let me tell you, man. Let me tell you the secret to why people didn't cut Kanye off, even though he went completely crazy and everything. Because he's from Chicago. I'm like, bro, anybody who's willing to put their neck out and help in Chicago, we always got to respect you. Like, Chicago is like the most deadliest black place in the world. Like, you will know in the black areas of Chicago, you probably got a high chance of dying. <laughs> and these people are willing to go there and try to help, they always going to get respected. So, yeah, and St. Cloud pa- Posse is always going to have juggalos. I get it. <laughs> Loyal fan base. <laughs> but John Loyal Legend was also, yeah, listen, man, he played the black musician in La La Land that needed the help of a white guy to make his jazz band better. Like, he is just folding over the whitewash Time and time again, and I'm just like, I thought for sure, like, telling people to get COVID boosters, that was the last straw for John Legend. Nah, because black people, most of the fools is getting COVID boosters, bro, sorry to say. Are you getting yeah. boosters and whatever? I ain't not getting the booster. That's why my job, I get kicked out of work often. Because my job has rules against those with and without boosters. So if you're without nice. a booster, like, so if you don't have a booster, you have to go, like, a longer period of time away from the office than those with boosters. Oh, shucks. And, they, and I'm on record of not having a booster. So if I'm, like, if I get a close contact with I have COVID, I got to stay away. Good. Five days. I'm happy that I got the, I got the, whatever it was, the Jans pharmaceutical one whatever the one and done shot like fairly in the beginning and it was the one that they're like "Ooh, we don't know if that one took and i'm like good that's the one i want the one that has the least amount of whatever shit you were trying to put in there good and i only got it so i could have my card so i could go into like public places that was it you're not putting anything else in me fuck you guys it's it, listen it's it just for my job I wasn't boosted before I started my current job. I never but got boosted. Like Don't plan on it. It's over. I think everybody's No, just... no, no. Not boosted. I mean, like, shot, period. Oh, I wasn't yeah. shot at all. No no booster. I've never had a booster. Yeah, but I'm you had the like, you had the upgraded shot because you took so long to where they're like, oh, we got this dialed in now. I got the yeah, one where they're like, yeah. I don't I don't think this is going to work. It's like, good. It, it, it was passed by the FDA by the time I got it. Yeah. The <laughs> tracking chips were online when you got it. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. It was FDA approved by the time I got it. So I didn't have that shit you had that you're going to mutate later in life. Nah. 
You mean the government funded drug association that says what's good? Sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all good. (laughs) That's like paying off the cops, man. You're just recycling the money. I don't know. I was just curious about the John Legend thing. It's good to know that he's still got his black card. Yeah, John Legend's cool. He's good, man. Shout out to the shout out to JL, man. All right. The legend is John. Good for you, buddy. <laughs> All right, well, let's go rapid fire. You gotta make some choices here. I don't even have these written down. I just like doing this kind of shit. So <laughs> here we go. John Legend or Will Smith? Uh, I don't know what we doing. Singing you just gotta pick one. Movie. It's rapid fire. It's not think about it. It's answer. Will Smith. All right. M and M's or Skittles? M and M's. Starburst or Sour Punch? Starburst. Mm. Tropical or regular? The ones with the pink, so regular, bro. Actually, the, can I just buy the like new pink pack? The all all mm. reds. Yeah. All pinks. All pinks, man. Give me all pinks. I'm good. Um, purple or orange? Purple. Jamaica or Hawaii? Hawaii. Oh, ain't going to nobody Jamaican. Canada or Mexico? Mexico. I don't need no passport. I've been there already. Mm. Donkey or mule? <laughs> Donkey. Yeah, you know that that makes sense. Jacket. You're in Mexico. You fucking... Nasty man. I know what you're into now. You can't hide from me. <laughs> Disgusting perv. Uh, so Mike's at a donkey show in Mexico with his purple pimp suit on, eating pink Starburst without a care in the world. Good for you, Mike. I wish I was. We just talked that into the universe. You wish you were at a donkey show? Yeah. What? They're jackasses. They might be funny. Do you know what that is? And I have a purple pair, and I have a purple pimp suit. Do you know what a donkey show is? A show with donkeys, I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? And there's some like other probably. I mean, really this is a fun new pop quiz that we just got going on. Okay, you tell me, Mike. You're in Mexico. There's something called a donkey show. Give me your top three guesses what you think happens. I would only have one guess, and if there's something else that goes okay, on... Okay, so what's your one guess? That there's donkeys in there putting on a show. Like what? Jumping through hoops? I, I guess the same thing fucking animals do at Barnum Bailey. Like, what are you talking about? Jumping through hoops, running around the In circle? Mexico, you yeah. think they have, they, they're have training donkeys to jump through hoops? I'm guessing if it's a donkey show, like, what else would you be doing with donkeys? They're having sex with them. People fuck animals. Like, Brandon, where do you get this shit from? <laughs> like, from the real like, world, Michael. I've never heard this shit in my entire life that people fuck donkeys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a thing. And I bet you it's one of those things. I've never gone, but I bet you it's one of those things where it sounds like a good idea until you get there. And then it's like, what did we do? (laughs) That does not sound like nothing about watching a human fucking animal sounds good at all. Not ever. I don't even understand how you could ever think that sounds good. First of all. Second of all, that is that is fucking disgusting. Someone's fucking animal. Let me just say that. I would never watch that. So, if that's what a donkey show is, I'm definitely not going to a donkey show, bro. Well, we have you on record saying that you're very excited to go. And you're wearing a purple pimp suit. Like, you're going to walk away with that donkey. I'm going to walk away. You know why I'm wearing a purple pimp suit? I'm going to be walking around smacking the shit out of people like pimps do. The hell the hell y'all probably here watching this dumbass If shit. you had to have sex with an animal, which animal would it be? I would never. I, I know. We already we went over this not too long ago, but I want to know your answer I now. I, I can't entertain such Fine. a person. Fine. If an animal was going to have sex with you, which animal I would it be? Enter- I can't entertain such a question. You animals have to. Are, humans are animals. A human. Mm. Woman. A woman. 
Beyonce, if I had if I had a choice. I'd just take two penguins because they're all slippery and smash them together like titties, and then just up and down. Because <laughs> I'm not penetrating weird. anybody, Mike. That would be rude. I hope you don't penetrate no animal because that would be nasty. I don't know, not man. Rude, you don't think a dolphin's hole is that'll like break your dick off? <laughs> <laughs> That's too tight. Yeah. And then a whale's blowhole, that'd be like the loosest puss of all time. You'd be like, oh, <laughs> that would just be deflating as a man to have sex with a whale's blowhole. The confidence the, would be the, drained. Until the whale blows and then you'd be shot. <laughs> yeah, shoot shot. your dick off yeah. through your asshole. That's not a good way to go. Just water pressure, the ultimate fire hose. Nature's fire hose. Yo. No thanks, man. You well, can't do anything, hair, any well, sharp animals. animals. They have hair. Sharp animals are no good. Anything sharp with too animals? much fur, gross. I don't, I don't entertain these type of thoughts. I don't know what the hell I would do. <laughs> would you let an elephant jerk you off with its trunk? <laughs> no. Like, God. You are such animals. a prude. No. Yes, I am. When it comes to animals. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> all right well let's switch over to a different kind of animal let's switch over to the ufc john jones is making his comeback this weekend fighting zero gain in the heavyweight division you're gonna kick his ass john jones doesn't lose i don't care it's been one week since uh it's been like two years since he's fought or a year and a half and or I something bet like you won't that. Bet against him. he is the favorite Going into his first ever heavyweight bout. He should be the favorite. He's John Jones. So, John Jones has been winning the last few fights he had after he had his latest comebacks. Last two comebacks. He's been winning, but they've been by decision. One split decision, cool. make, two unanimous, and a... A draw or a no decision against uh, Daniel Cormier. Draw. So, so do you want to make some money this weekend? Tell me. Bet on the other guy. Zero gain? Go ahead. I think Put he is. Put on the other guy, and you could win some money. You could win some money. <laughs> yeah, well, that is gambling. It's it's a lot closer than you think. I think the odds are like John Jones is minus 170. Zero gain is like plus 145, 150. Like, it's a close. It's it's one of the most. Who knows? In Vegas, we don't want nobody to get paid. I'm telling you who's going to win. It ain't really that good. It ain't going to be that close. It unfortunately sucks because the other co-main event is awesome, but it's going to be Shevchenko is defending her title, and she's probably going to smash. And unfortunately, the rest of the card isn't that stacked. Which the UFC tends to do. If they have like a super mega fight, like a John Jones coming back after two years, they kind of just fill the card with a bunch of, hey, we need to put fights on the card. Not the cards where they have like two co main events. I'm sure they're calling this one a co main event, even though it's not. Um, where they have like two or three title defenses, and they usually stack the card with like six or seven incredible fights. Don't get me wrong. This is the UFC. They're going to be amazing fights. But there was maybe like four that I was like, ooh, I really want to watch these. But, but John the Jones. The most hated man in, in, in boxing, I mean, in UFC is about to fight again soon, right? Who's that? Connor? Yeah. I saw him pr- I promo on some shit. Yeah, he tends to do that from time to time, though. He did that, you know, six months ago that he was training. No, he's going to fight the fight. Michael dude. Some Michael dude. They, they're going to, so they got teams. They got a competition. Oh, going yeah, on yeah. He is a, gonna fight. He's a coach on the Ultimate Fighter. And at the end of well, the season, gonna fight they're going to fight. Whoever the other yeah. dude is, yeah, because the other dude was on the show I was watching. He was on, like, one of these morning shows on, like, FS1. And he said they're going to fight at the end. Yeah, so Conor McGregor is one of the coaches on the new upcoming Tough, the Ultimate Fighter. And then he's going to fight the other coach at the end of the season, which is pretty standard. Um. Yeah. Which, but these are pretty too pretty because it's Connor and like some pretty decent fight like Michael some shit. Yeah. Okay, so you're all on John Jones. I I'm just excited to watch it. 
because John Jones has a ton of skills, but heavyweight is a different division. And I know John Jones is the man, but I don't care who you are. If you get caught in the heavyweight division, you're most likely going down. So we'll see. I'm praying for this guy because he's going. Bro, can you imagine if John Jones gets punched in the nose and just both his deviated septums just <laughs> just break wide open and that's what does it? His cocaine use ends up coming to bite him back in the ass because he gets punched in the nose too hard. <laughs> It's like he could continue, but the blood won't stop flowing, so they have to stop it. It's like mm, you kind of deserve that one on your own, buddy. That would be the, like the that ultimate. One, yeah, <laughs> too much, baby. Yeah, it's true. <clears throat> it is true. Which, I, uh, by the way, we talked about Dana White a few weeks ago or a month ago, whatever. Okay. Like when he smacked his wife and got in trouble for that, yeah. <laughs> and then he doubles down. By this slapping contest thing, like, that's insane. That would be like if Ray Rice, after he got busted, came out with the new isotoner gloves. It's like, hey, keep your hands nice and soft. You don't want to damage these bad boys. What do you mean? Dana White founded this league, this slap fest tournament league. Oh, that league was founded before he I know, but he, like, he took it over after he got in trouble for slapping his wife. Like, what can this guy get away with? Yeah, because they went viral at that time. You know, he takes advantage of any moment because that dude, have you seen the slap around the world when he, like, swore his whole side of his face? Nah, I don't really watch wall. that crap. Oh, oh, no, it was, a, like, a clip that came Yeah, no, I, I saw, but, I, I like, I saw that there was that clip, and I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't scroll past this. I don't yeah. want to see this. He smacked his ass, Brendan, and his face immediately swelled up, like, the entire, <laughs> like, the entire side of his face. Just I've never seen like someone's face swell up this quick. Like it happened instantly. Like dude slapped him, and his whole face just like <laughs> it was quite funny. Well, it was funny. I was talking to a comic who uh, he trains as a boxer and stuff too, and we were talking one night in the back of the bar, and we were talking about like people talking shit or like coming up and wanting to fight you, and we we're like, dude, the best move, especially if somebody's bigger than you, is to just open palm smack them as fucking hard as you can across the face. Because it'll still most like... People don't realize how much force you're still putting into it. It's just not a punch. Like, you could still jar somebody enough to where they're like, what is going on right now? And they just got slapped. Okay? So it's (laughs) like, you could come at me, but I already have the advantage of the first move. And second of all, you might be so confused that you're just like, what the hell is happening? You're like, yeah... I just wanted to knock you off your equilibrium real quick. And then by the time you get to being back in this situation, I'll know if we're fighting or if we're not. But I'll still have the first move advantage here. <laughs> and it's proven. All these slap fest stupid things. No, the, no, the one the one viral clip that I've seen that shit is crazy. It's just silly. It's just silly. Uh, what else you got with sports right now? Do you even care about what's going on with sports right now? Yeah, I watch basketball. I mean, I care because I bet money on basketball. Because <laughs> I think the Suns are going to win the championship. I bet money on that. And I bet money on night on FanDuel. But, like, I don't really – the Bulls stink, so fuck them. Baseball is not really real yet, so to hell with that. Football is over. And college basketball, my team is pretty stinky. But mm-hmm. if we beat Duke on Sunday – We'll still have a chance to make the tourney. And if we make the tourney, watch out. Don't bastards. say watch out. Just stop it. Stop it. You're unranked. You're not allowed to talk shit. We were unranked going into the tourney last year. We made the championship game, bro. <laughs> okay, so early early, uh, early guesses for the March Madness tournament. Who do you have as, yeah, like- let's say, two of the final four because we don't know how it's going to shake out with the bracket? I like Purdue. I mean, not Purdue. I take that back. I don't like Purdue. They're good. I don't like Purdue in my final. Well, it depends on how the bracket straight out. Because one yeah. of the things I'm picking is probably going to be a one seed, which is I like Houston. I like Houston on, okay. on paper. I've seen them play a couple times this year. I like guards win you games in, in the match, March Madness, and they got to be pretty tough guards. I like Baylor. Okay. They, they, their guard plays pretty tough, and they got a couple big men. Um, Texas could be good. We'll see. Um, who else? Who else do I like? 
Who else do I like? Who else, Who else do you like? UConn. I've seen UConn, and I like UConn. I like UConn. Okay. I like that team. I don't really like them, but I really don't like nobody out the ACC, to be honest. Like, I don't see nobody making a far run, really. I mean, I'm a... You don't like Tennessee? Fan, so I don't know. They have too many bad losses, man. Yeah, they see, have really, they have some really good wins, but they have some really bad losses. Like Tennessee is going to be my outside pick to make the Final Four, and then Kansas is my. One well, depending seed. on how the bracket, yeah, depending on how the bracket breaks. Exactly. Tennessee could definitely, yeah, definitely make the run. Definitely, because the run. they could be in that one of those nice little middle spots and just kind of bink, 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 get down to playing a number one in the. Elite Eight or Final mm-hmm. Four, and then that is just a one game situation. Yeah, Purdue, anybody else in the Big Ten? Yeah. Yeah, I think Nobody Purdue, depending team. on who they pull. I mean, Purdue has a good team. They could win it. Don't get me wrong. I just, I don't know. I don't think they get past the Elite Eight. Purdue, I th- I've mm-hmm. seen too many holes. And I haven't watched that much basketball, so that's kind of like a, you know, it's a throwing a dart at the wind there. But um, I just. Mm, they don't do it for me. So you got Baylor and Houston as two That's of your like right two of your four. I like I think Kansas is just I don't know, they're just they win those games they need to. Now the problem is they have a lot of letdown games this year where it's like they come off a big win and then they're almost guaranteed a loss the next <laughs> next game. I, I just don't think they have enough shooting this year. You know, I don't know how the hell we let them come back on the championship, but they had a whole different team that year. I honestly don't just don't believe they don't have enough shooting this year. Yeah, they don't uh, seem like the, if they're if they're down that they can come back. It just seems like they're a team that if they're winning, they can hold on to a lead. Uh, but then again, like I said, I haven't watched a ton of college basketball, so I'm only speaking off the limited viewing that I've done. But <laughs> like when Kansas is playing a big game against Kansas State, and it's like, you know, when they're down, it's like, ooh, I don't know that you can finish this out against a good team. <laughs> And then so what? And then what ended up happening is I think they ended up winning that game, and then the next two games in a row they drop or something like that, or the next game they drop to like a Texas Tech, somebody who's decent but not great. And it's like, oh, yeah. are you going to do that during the tournament? Because that's not that's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like they put all their eggs in one basket, and then they're just like, okay, hopefully next game goes good. Yeah, but Bill Self can coach, so they'll be okay. Well, that's kind of what I'm relying on with that pick is that that veteran coaching in high level games, you know. We can do brackets again though. Like we can like We will bracket. We'll do a bracket session. Bore everybody to tears except for the six people that love (laughs) bracketology. I'll kick your ass anyway. Okay. You have yet to kick my ass on anything that we've challenged each other on. Still I don't think that's true, but well, now, I'm still waiting for that that solidified uh, research that you have on this, where you've beat me at something. The last thing you beat me at was like the shootout game, the basketball shootout game that we had at the house together. Yeah, you have to get other people to beat me because you couldn't. No, I kicked your ass in that. You you would yeah, I, hey I I'm trying to give you props here is is if the high score was beat you would go back and and stand there until it was beat again good for you but as far as since we started this this podcast and been putting these little challenges out there you have yet to be victorious against me it's the truth yeah. might be right man you're a winner. Only against you right now, but that's okay. One, your luck will change one of these days. As soon as you start making better bets. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. Oh, Can't win at everything, you know? It's all good, but Can't be a winner all the time. Oh, trust me, I know. I picked, I took a week off of golf because the first two weeks of the FedEx Cup season series, whatever, um, I picked the first two winners. 
good, good. Then week three comes around, and I pick second place. The guy had the fucking meltdown at the Genesis at Riviera Country Club. So I was like, I got to take a week off. And in the meantime, like when I was doing good at golf, my basketball was kind of down. And then when I wasn't doing great in golf, my basketball was up. I can't hit anything. I couldn't hit the broadside of a barn or water if I fell out of a boat. It's not going well for me right now. So I just have to take a little <laughs> bit of a break because I'm just, my finger's not on the pulse and I'm shooting Never off of reprieve. like partial information and it's, it's pointless. Might as well just burn money. Because I'm not betting on hockey. I always suck at hockey. You can bet on the Rangers. They're going to win a lot of games. They're probably going to win the championship. You believe so? Yeah, their fucking lineup is crazy when they traded for Kane just now. Like, they traded for Kane yesterday. That's, That's true. Crazy. The Kings traded away Jonathan Quick, finally. Old hey, balls. Who? Uh, the Blue Jackets. They got a defenseman and an attacker. So we'll see. They're trying to make a little playoff run. They're doing well for the first time in a while, so that's nice. I'm a kind of loose Kings fan. I used to be way more into the Kings. Going out chasing a fucking record with one championship. Who? Ovechkin. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, what are you supposed to do? I mean, you really can't do nothing, but the ownership should do something as in put a better fucking team around him. If he's still scoring goals at this pace, that means he's at least good. Like, yeah. he, LeBron James, I mean, at least put some talent around him and let him feel like he's got a shot. You just out here like, yo, we're going to sell tickets because he's about to break the record. We ain't going to spend no extra money on more talent. We're just going to play this shit out and collect these checks. Yeah, all they're doing is reinvesting whatever money they're saving into per, into uh, producing more Ovechkin jerseys for sale. Mm-hmm. That's all they're doing. <laughs> That's all they're doing. <laughs> Sure. I hate teams that don't play the one. I'm sorry. It's just you know. yeah. It kind of that's the way it kind of felt in uh, Portland for a while with with Dame. Uh, <laughs> it's just kind yeah, of like probably, good luck. They're probably all out trying to win still, but they make it look better on paper. Yeah. Oh well, let's move into. I want to take a little bit of extra time in this section this week, so we're moving it up. So, what have you been watching, sir? A whole bunch of shit, but... Um, I don't know. What the fuck didn't I tell you last week? I think I went over my all my new shows. First, Perfect Match, Love is Blind. I told you all that shit last week. I don't think I've had anything new this week. Um, but I want to start watching Snowfall, but it's not enough episodes in yet. And it's the final it's season, the huh? Season. In the final season, the Blacklist started last night. Oh, 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 oh. So you got two of your favorite shows going into their final season. Yes. Mm. And then uh, Succession is starting soon. I don't think you've ever started that one. But that one, the final season, is coming up uh, in a couple of weeks. A few weeks, maybe. The did more of episodes of Perfect Match today. <laughs> did you watch them? No, I didn't watch them yet, buddy. Okay. I, to, I thought I was. Cause I usually wake up in the middle of the night, so I would watch them. But I didn't wake up in the middle of the night. Maggie slept through the night last night. So. so, okay. So let's just dive right into Perfect Match, and let me tell you, as somebody <laughs> who's seen the entire season. There's a reason why they released them the way that they did, where they released the first block of eight episodes, and then they released the, the four after, because there's 12 episodes. So they released a block of eight, and then they released a block of four. Without giving anything away, the last And then four... what's the final block of oh, four more? Yeah, so, the, so there's only, yeah, so there's eight that have been out, and then... Just recently, an extra four came out to complete the entire season. Now, the last four episodes could have They easily... didn't release all those at the same time either. They only released four at a time. They released four, then they may just uh... wait to like the, the 21st of February. 
and then they released another and then they four. Released those, and then they say come back on the 28th. Oh, okay. So it came in three sets, not two. Mm-hmm. Got it. Okay. That makes more sense because the first eight episodes, pretty awesome. The last mm-hmm. four episodes could have been condensed down to two easily. And it definitely leaves on kind of like a whatever note. You know what I mean? It's like, how do you wrap up a show that's the perfect match once you stop bringing new people into the house? It's like everybody's just kind of like buddied up at this point. You know, so it kind of, it it tails off on the yeah, it's funny, the it's funny. high friction, frantic <laughs> drama of the last second. Like, wait, what a second? You know, the paranoia part goes yeah, away. I figure it had to stop at some point if you're really trying to find a perfect match. You really got to find five matches that are good and then narrow down from those, right? Like, otherwise, this show could just go on for fucking ever. So, right. like, at some point, you have to cut it down and be like, okay, so you five, no more new people now. You five to figure out who's the best of you five. But the drama and the hilarious, like, I had some hilarious moments in this season. <laughs> oh, for sure. So, okay. Going through the first eight episodes, that's fine. That's where you're up to. That's the only part that I really care to talk about anyway, kind of. I want to know, give me some characters, some people, and what you think about them. Like, who is your, who's your person that you like or you root for? You're like, oh, that's my person. I like this person. See, I like Nick, right? Nick was my guy. Oh, he's the worst. You like the worst. Because Nick... <laughs> Nick was just funny, bro. Like he uh, went like one chick, another chick. Then he was like, "Oh, I went with her with one night." I was like, "Yeah, it wasn't no spark there." I'm trying to go back to my old chick, even though I told my homie he can have her. I'm gonna go mess that up. And <laughs> like, dude, the funny. guy that shouldn't be getting any play at all somehow is like bouncing around with this confidence, like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure who I'm gonna pick." And everybody's like, "Well, I'm not picking you, man." It's just so weird. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it's like, oh, no, I really like this guy. And you're like, wait, what? This guy is the worst. He's got no game. No game. Nick, no, he had no game. He could just, I guess he, he kissed he kissed everybody. He, he wowed everybody with his kiss skill. Uh, he's so gross to me. I know so many people like him that just like, I don't like him. I really don't like him. <laughs> Oh, uh, Nick, Nick's a funny guy, but even funnier guy is my man, Baptiste, who ended up joining the show from Love is Blind. Yeah. <laughs> Before I even finished Love is Blind. So I was like, oh, well, I know how your relationship ends. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, man, he, he, he's been, fun. I mean, he's been, I don't know, semi entertaining because he jumped girls a couple of times too now. At the point that I'm at, like he's been with at least two girls at this point. You know what I've figured out based on this show? If you're isolated with people and you're tall, you've got a better chance than other people. (laughs) Have you noticed that? When they were just all like standing around this little tiki bar thing, it's like. But that's always been the case. As they go in height, you can see the people, like, the gravitational pull towards those people. It's so funny. Taller guys always attract the girls, man. All right. Let me see. Who is, uh, what do you think of, uh... But I don't like the one chick, bro. Which one? What's her name? Francesca? Francesca? Nobody likes her. I don't like her for multiple reasons. But, yeah, she, like, messed up. The girl who was trying to holler at her dude because she was like, oh, I'm so into your dude. Then they go to the room and she picks to send her dump on a date with her ex dude because she got stuff to figure out. And then <laughs> they put her on a date with a girl and she's like, yo, forget you ex dude that I brought in this house because I thought I liked you. Nah, buddy. Kick rocks. <laughs> yeah, she's just an attention whore. She doesn't care about people exactly. or anything. She just cares about... She, care about that. she just wants some attention. Yeah, she just wants attention. So that, you know, that's kind of like whatever. The fact that everybody was still going for her and still going for her, it's like, at what point do look, our looks like not enough? And to, to all these people, apparently it doesn't matter. 
they're all 20 something man that's what makes this so funny like, I know. y'all are not like the chance of y'all actually finding love love right here at this age is slim well not so only I'm that every single one of people. every single one of these people is recycled from another reality show on Netflix so it's like there's they one guy tried to find love. that got like People hadn't seen his season of getting left at the altar yet, but he shows up to this house and they're like, oh, what happened in your season? He's like, oh, I got left at the altar. They're like, what? When did that happen? He's like, oh, not very long ago. Like, I came from there to here. It's like, oh, yeah, that guy's probably in prime position. Get him on a rebound from blind marriage to stick him in a house with somebody who has to pick him. How much do you think Netflix is playing in Lachey? Because they have at least six shows on Netflix right now. I bet you it's not a lot for what they get back. Because here's the thing. <laughs> if you give, if you notice his wife wasn't on this one. So they're like, listen, we're only paying one of you for this one. We don't need both of you. Um, I bet you they each get like a million bucks per season. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but if they have four running at the same time or in the same year, that's four million bucks for Nick. That's two to three for his old lady. They're clearing seven, eight million dollars a year plus whatever just through Netflix. And how many people watch it? Don't know. A ton. A ton. A ton. So they're making yeah, money I mean, hand over fist, and so is everybody. You know, the people involved because they're the executive producers on the show. Blah blah blah. So they just are making money hand over fist. Mula baby. I don't know. Perfect match was the first eight episodes were good and fun and funny because it's just like it was just super wild. And when you see people getting their feelings hurt. When it's like, how did you not see this person doesn't give a fuck about you? Fuck about you. But the funniest, the oh, makes it God. more funny is that the reason why the person, like, you can be in the room with a guy that is going to be the reason why this girl hurts your feelings, and you just got to stand there and look at him like, damn, you taking my girl, bro. Because in the real world, that's not what would happen. What would happen is you would get your fucking face smashed. But you can't do it because you on this produce TV show and you'd probably end up in jail. <laughs> it's so ridiculous, dude. Yo, because the one dude was like crying and shit. <laughs> well, that's the other thing I don't get. It's like, <laughs> how can you cry over multiple people in a span of like four days? Come yeah, on hey, now. That's the, that's the thing that baffled me. I was like, yo, how are you falling this in love with somebody? And it's almost like a Stockholm Syndrome thing. Like, as soon as you leave, you're not going to like all of those quirky little things that you had to deal with. You're going to be like, fuck that, dude. I don't got to deal with this bullshit yeah. anymore. I fell in love with you behind the wall, but when I see you, um, nope. I will say, I didn't like Bartice on Love is Blind, the parts that I saw, because I didn't finish that. And He's a, he's a bit of a douche. He kind <laughs> of is. But I will say in this show, I've gotten a little, like, I started to like him a little bit. He still rubs me the wrong way. It's one of those things I can't put my finger on. It's just like. He's also 25. That's probably what it is. No, but it's his face. It's his face. Um, (laughs) But, so I guess I do know what it is. But the way that he deals with these chicks, like, he tries to be super, like, nice to him and then if they start getting bitchy with him or like no you're not understanding my feelings he's like well actually i just have a decision to make and i'm starting to decide not you (laughs) like he'll just tell them straight to their face like do you know what you're doing right now basically okay fine like you realize i'm not your boyfriend and i don't have to sit here and deal with this shit i can just go pick somebody else like, that's kind of his demeanor once it... Like, he'll switch real quick. He'll oh, be, no, like, he all on you, all on... Hey, everything's good, everything's cool. And then as soon as you're just, like, getting in his grill about something, he's like, hang on a second. You know I don't need this, right? I don't I don't have to be a part of this, right? And he's, like, the only person that has that on the show to where he's like, 
hang on a second. Just because an um, hour ago we were going to be all good, you're kind of getting into crazy girlfriend mode, and I don't need that in my life. So, deuces. Don't need it in my life. <laughs> no, he, he's quick. He's quick to, yeah, he's quick to let him and know. And then everybody uh, else is like, I'm leaving. I'm staying. I'm leaving. I'm staying. Ah. And then it's over multiple people, and you're like, oh, my gosh. Why can't you just do the thing where it's like, you know what? You're not worth my time and walk away. But nobody does that. It's only funny. Like the funniest parts are the awkward paranoia things where they get it completely wrong. And then they make these decisions, <laughs> this, these quote unquote love decisions based off of like, well, if he's doing this and I'm doing this. And this other person's doing this. I might as well go and talk to this person. It's like, it's the show of paranoia where the people that aren't paranoid have like the easiest track. And the people that are, are just on this frantic goose chase of ass. And it's like, are you trying to get laid? Are you trying to be famous? Are you trying to find quote unquote love? Like, I don't know. It's just the trifecta of crazy reality TV. I don't know what they have going on. I find it fucking completely hilarious, though. I will tell you that. I'm surprised more people don't bang. No, I'm pretty sure it's a lot of banging. We just don't know about them. Uh, I think that uh, the one couple, Joey and Carousel, who have been together since the beginning, I think they've been boning since the beginning, and they're just like, yeah, everybody knows, so we don't really, we don't really bother with that. But everybody else, I don't know that they're going to the bone zone. It doesn't seem like they are. <laughs> they're probably going to the bone zone. I think okay. I think it's one of those things where a couple of them do, but not as much as you would think. Not like on these other shows <laughs> that you like to watch, all these naked shows. Naked shows? I don't watch naked shows, man. Are you sure you never watch Naked and Afraid? Yes. All right. Naked at first sight. You really got this thing with naked at afraid. That's married at first sight naked. Would be a show. I'm you pretty sure it that. is. I think they um, took okay. that naked and afraid or something at like that was a show. On TLC or something stupid. Like you just um, met never, people naked and that was the hookup show. I don't know. I mean, that's the ultimate judge first, right? Somebody walks up naked, you're not like, I wonder what their personality's like. <laughs> that's the purest form, man. You should be able to talk completely. If once you're up there naked, you should no longer be embarrassed or anything. Like someone's seeing you ass naked. We should be able to talk about anything at this point. What do you want to talk about, butt naked? Friend? Genitals. <laughs> I mean, first off, right? You got to address the elephant in the room if it's us. Speaking of elephants and big dicks, I did, uh, <laughs> I went to watch The Best Man, the final chapters or last chapters or whatever. Have you seen this? Yes. Okay. So in, in my, uh, Whatever. It's been a long time since I've seen the Best Man movies. So, And I don't even know that I made it all the way through Best Man Holiday when I went and saw it. But considering they're about a decade in between each freaking chapter of this. Like, the Best Man came out in, like, what, 99, 2000? Something like that? The Best Man Holiday came out in, like... It's like every 2013. Yeah. And then Best Man Last Chapter. So, I did something where I watched... To get myself re-familiarized with it, I watched The Best Man and The Best Man Holiday back to back. <sighs> that was, I text you, that was emotionally exhausting, dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it was, man. Oh. An emotional movie, bro. Oh, it had been a while, and I was just like, oh my gosh. And then, so anyway, so that was like... <clears throat> I took a day to recover off of that, and then I had to jump into the best man, the final chapters or whatever. 
Which I thought they were pretty, it was pretty good. I thought the landing was, you know, the final episode was a little weak. Like, this <laughs> is the culmination of 20 years. And you're going to just kind of loosely piece together the final 20 minutes of this show. That was kind of bogus to me. What did you think of it? I mean, I, uh, I didn't like the ending, but I thought it overall was decent. I would have preferred a movie instead of this little four pack or six pack of shows. Though, it was eight episodes. Eight, whatever. Six, eight, four. All the same. Not really, because they're an two. hour long. Yep, still should have been a movie. See, I could see that that should have been like a, a long movie, like a two and a half hour movie. Okay. There's a lot to wrap up there. Yeah, and just look at that movie. That's it, man. Because now they're going to have more spinoffs. You know that, right? Like, this is that's not the end, which is why it ended the way it did. Like, that's not going to be the end. It's going to be more bullshit now. Yeah. Which is why they turned it into a they can sell it so they can sell more bullshit. But anyway, whatever. Happy for them. Congratulations to those fuckers who want to make money off the shit. So what... Not my decision. Okay, so obviously the best man's your favorite out of the whole bunch. Yeah. The original. Duh. Duh. It's nice and Who's your favorite character? Huh? Okay, so uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. In the best man situation, who are you? In the best man situation? I'm Harper. I'm always Harper. You're Harper? <laughs> Yeah. Why are you Harper? Because I got the girls, bro. That's what I did in high school. To hell with sports, to hell, I got the girls. And Harper got the girls on the chill stuff. Like the yeah, but Har- Harper's chill. also a dirtbag. How is he a dirt? I've never understood how Harper's a dirtbag, bro. So his best friend Harper's a dirtbag because he can never own up to his own shit. I don't care about what his him. shit was. He just never would own up to his own him. shit. He's a little weasel. He eventually told, he eventually told him. Now I wouldn't have did. No, he eventually got called out every time. Because <laughs> I couldn't, because I couldn't like bone my homeboy's friend. But like, I was the chill. I wouldn't really. If if it wasn't the sports involved, I'd have said I was more chestnut. Clearly, I mean, we look alike. See, and, you are more of a Lance yeah. Sullivan type of guy because he still got the girls in school. Yeah, he did. I wasn't good at sports. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I was smart too. but you know so, he's also, maybe. you know, he's he's got the moral compass, you know, realignment and the good maybe, guy. Maybe fun. me and Lance would have, maybe me, maybe man, so me and Lance would have been more aligned. I don't know. Like back then, I was kind of, I was kind of a ladies' man, you know. And then you're the, sports. you know, you're the the God fearing leader of the group. Probably, Always there. you know, you Definitely. just got a lot of Lance vibes trying to take care of everybody around you, but you doing your own thing, you know, I don't know. You gave me a lot of Lance vibes. All right. I mean, now you said, uh, okay. I that. Who do you think I am in this situation? Terrence Howard. Yeah, I'm quitting for sure. <laughs> no question. <laughs> Let's get this party started and stare this shit up. <laughs> as soon uh, as I turned it back on, I was like, oh, I forgot how much I love Q and how much I'm like, I'd have done that. I'd have done that. I'd have done that. The guy that says everything you're not supposed to say and just looks at you in the face and is like, yeah. <laughs> oh, you think that was over the top? Guess what I have on deck. <laughs> No, Q's Q's the best. Q, but he made the movie actually. Honestly. Oh well, I'll take that with uh, as very flattering. Yeah, he's necessary. He's the necessary mm-hmm. fuck up of the group that still just is brutally honest, <laughs> but tries to do it in a fun way. Yeah, Q's <laughs> the party starter, the shenanigan haver. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> I almost wish that was a little more of a debate, but I mean, if it walks like a duck, <laughs> 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 then let's get this party started. I love ducks. ducks. Oh man. So we were talking about John Jones earlier. 
And I think I'd like to close this episode out with our top five greatest comebacks. Top five greatest comebacks. Well, one in five would, from, for me are going to be from a, a similar place. Okay. So number five would be game four, 2004 World Series. I mean, not World Series, Division Series. Oh, no, Championship. It was the ALCS 2004 yeah. Boston Red Sox who were down three games to none versus the New York Yankees who were just dominating game at the four. time, who had A-Rod, Nine. Jeter, and then four days in October team. We and uh, we were down 2-1. And then shit started to happen. And then Big Poppy became a legend forever. Well, first of all, everybody misses the first part. Shout out to my man. Dave Roberts. Manager. Yes. Like he has to get like the credit. Sometimes Dave Roberts is missed in this equation. And he doesn't get his credit. He is the he equation. Doesn't steal that, yeah. He doesn't steal that base. Everything that happens after that doesn't happen. So the stolen base is literally the most important part of everything that happened there to follow. So shout out to Dave Roberts. Uh, but then we begin. I will say one of the best. 30 for 30s I've ever seen, top to bottom, most well done, is four days in October. And let me tell you when I <laughs> I was one of the people that bet on the Yankees to close out game seven. And the bookie that I bet with at the time, that was his biggest payday that he's ever had. Bigger than any Super Bowl, anything, because Everybody bet the Yankees. Everybody knew, yeah, because everybody knew no one's ever come back from like it was the impossible for account. So he straight the, cleaned up. Yeah. But when I tell you in watching Game Four, when there's I think there's two outs right in the mm-hmm. in the ninth, and Dave Roberts is who was it? Kevin Millar got a got a base hit or it was one of the it was one of the guys. Yeah, Kevin Millar got the base hit, gets to first. And then Dave Roberts comes in to pinch run. And in the whole world it is palpable. Everybody knows Dave Roberts is running. (laughs) Now let me bring in the new rules to this situation. Dave Roberts is taking three, five, seven steps off of first base. Like crazy bananas shit. And he keeps getting the ball thrown over to first base. They're trying to get him on the pickoff and they can't get him. Now with the new rules. Pitcher's only allowed to do that three times in a game or in an inning or some, or per batter or some shit. So for Dave Roberts, after the second or third throw over, he could take 10 steps towards second base because the guy's not allowed to do it. So in this time where pickoffs are unlimited, Dave Roberts, when the entire world knows that he's running to second base, pitcher's going to throw... When he does finally throw a pitch, he's throwing a fastball outside to make sure that the catcher has it on the glove throwing hand, comes up, popping, ready to go. He still gets the bag. Still gets the bag. Still gets the bag. And if Dave Roberts doesn't go that 90 feet to get that 16 by 16 bag, the greatest comeback in baseball history does not happen. Not happen. Literally does not happen. So that's five for me. Uh, four would probably be the Houston Rockets coming back against the the Tracy McGrady game. So he oh, when he scored against. thirteen points in eleven seconds or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was pretty sick. Um. Uh, number three is probably Tom Brady. Twenty-eight three. It's a hell of a comeback at halftime. Oh, from the Falcons? Yeah. I made a buttload of money on that game. I hammered the Patriots in the second half. Uh, Number two is probably the greatest comeback I've ever seen. Let me – because I know what I had in mind. Let me think if I have anything else in mind to replace it. That I've ever seen. My eye. Nope, it's going to be Peyton Manning on Monday night versus the Bucks. I think it was like 25 in the fourth. Like some crazy shit. Hey, man, it went crazy. <laughs> and then number one is the finishing of the Boston Red Sox and Yankee series. 
from coming back from 3-0 down, the one and only time we've ever seen it happen in sports history. Yes, Boston is my team. I love them, and that was the greatest comeback of all time. And Fair enough. My five. Fair enough. My top five greatest comebacks, not surprisingly, are a little bit different. Number one, Plaxico Burris. <laughs> I mean, the fact that this dude went to jail for shooting himself in the leg after he was on top of the world, it takes a lot to come back and be comeback player of the year for the Jets. Good for you, Plaxico. I really didn't like you very much, but good for you for making a comeback and, and wiping that embarrassment off your resume. Because had he not got comeback player of the year, he would only be the guy that shot himself in the leg and went to jail for it. You are right about that. Shout out to Plaxico Burris. We actually wanted him when he came back from that, but we couldn't get him. He went to the jet. So, actually, fuck you, Plaxico <laughs> I'm fine with that, too. <laughs> uh, greatest comebacks. Dwight Gooden and Daryl Strawberry. I mean, the two monsters <laughs> of the Mets. Dwight Gooden was, you know, those two were just, they were just characters. They came back from the the most powerful drug ever made to mankind, right? (laughs) And they both got arrested multiple times for different things. And, you know, they're still two of the greatest Mets of all time. Good for you guys. Uh, Next greatest comeback, Leonard Little. I mean, I actually don't like Leonard Little. I don't either, but when the guy gets drafted. And it's not because of the fact that he, what he did, is the fact that he didn't have much remorse for it. Yeah. So Leonard Little had manslaughter DUI coming into the league. And since he was, you know. <laughs> a highly touted prospect or whatever. He ended up getting probation for it. You know, the Dante Stallworth thing. And ended up being like an all pro pro bowler, all this kind of stuff and had a great career. One of those things where, you know, NFL looks the other way. This guy has a great career. They're like, Hey, he was all good while he was in there. And then he gets back out, out of the NFL and gets picked up a couple more times for harassment and DWI and stuff. It's like, okay. So they were just covering this stuff up while he was in the league. Cool. <laughs> yeah. and, um, the reason why is because there was an ESPN special at one time, and the lady's son was on there, and she's like, "All this." He was just like, "All these years, I just asked for an apology. Ooh, I'm not gonna say anyone deserves to be in jail or whatever, even though he was, you know, what I'm saying the alcohol and involved stuff. So, like, I did. I would like an apology. Ooh. He was just an asshole about it. like, "Oh, this dude ain't asking for no money. No, he just want you to apologize for killing his mother." And you couldn't even do that? You're an NFL All-Pro. It shouldn't be beneath you to tell somebody I'm sorry when you were fucking wrong. Yeah. I'm not a fan. Yeah, that's one of those mentalities where it's like, I'm getting punished, so that's all I'm getting. Yeah, but you weren't really getting punished. You killed somebody. You weren't getting punished much much at all. He missed out on like eight or nine game checks. You know, had to pay. It was was minimal, minimal, minimal. Yeah, Um, very minimal. Top five greatest comebacks. Mike Tyson. Give me a break. That might be the, like, the greatest comeback of all time. The, Mike Tyson came back and won a belt. Baddest man on the planet. Just when you go to yeah, prison for good. rape and then you come back and people are like, he's still a good guy. That's, I don't know what kind of comeback. That is magical. But that's the only reason why he got away because audio and shit came out. Like, right. If none of that shit ever comes out, everybody looked at him as like fucking animal. Yeah, but because of some audio of how she treated him, also came out that people like gained a contact around, which is still bullshit. Because mm. you're Mike Tyson, yeah. And people can yell at him. If you in your case, you should even take a couple hits before you start swinging back. Like, if your name bro. is the baddest man on the planet, <laughs> you're not allowed to be in domestic disputes. It, it, it's like, just not, you know. You can walk away or take those punches, bro. Like you're not allowed. To get back. <laughs> you're beating up 300 pound grown men who are expecting yeah. it. That's not. You can't take that into the home. These men that you beat up are fighting back, and yeah. you're still beating the dog shit out of them. You should definitely, yeah, no domestic. You domestic, not in the same sentence ever. 
And then, I mean, what may be the greatest comeback of all time, Mike Vick. <laughs> I definitely wasn't expecting that one, but that was a major comeback. Mike Vick came back and signed a $100 million. Someone signed Michael Vick to a $100 million contract after going to jail. <laughs> and then... How fucking crazy is this? And then... He became an analyst. <laughs> they put him on TV. Good for they Mike Vick. After going to jail for killing and strangling and hanging dogs, my man signed a $100 million deal and got on TV. And That's yeah, a they say black people don't. They say black people don't get privilege and black people don't catch breaks in life and black people don't do all this stuff. And I know we get this shit under the stick. A lot of the time. But if you're a hyper athlete, you make the exception, buddy. <laughs> and sometimes that stick breaks in our favor. And Michael Vick is one of those that will tell you it broke in his favor. Oh my God. Shout out to Michael Vick. Shout out to Mike Vick. Honorable mention, Nate Newton. Nasty Nate. <laughs> Nasty Nate with the 278 pounds in the car. Well, Nate did... <laughs> Same thing, like the begin- very beginning of the, his career, or right before, he, right after he got drafted, he got busted for killing dogs in a dog fighting ring, and then yeah, but back then it wasn't as frowned upon. It wasn't as, as frowned upon. He got probation and a fine, yeah. and then but his real charges. And the then charges. yeah, so they're like, so then he got to play his all pro career after all that. Nobody really know knew about anything. And then after, then he gets busted twice. <laughs> twice. One year Yo, apart for like 170-something pounds of weed and then 200-something pounds of weed. But you know what the weird thing is? Like, Cowboys players always get, like, is it like something about the border you get the drugs in from Mexico? Because that's not the only player. Like, Cowboys have had at least three players that have been busted with, like, Drug kingpin amounts of drugs. Like I don't know if you remember the wide receiver guy at one point for the Cowboys. Yeah, ended up getting busted. You like, mean Michael Irvin's dealer? No, no, no. I'm talking about like a guy who played for the Cowboys. Like he was a receiver. I mean, get I know, but that's what I'm saying. Is yeah, it was probably like, easy yeah. access for good old Mike to just be like, slide it over to me. I'm not going to get yeah. it myself. <laughs> No, this is no, this is later. This is like two thousand or something receiver. Oh man, no, this is later. Like and he's like a bum receiver, not yeah, Miles well, Austin. That's why. Though, but like, like forget his name. Miles oh, Austin. God. Miles Austin doesn't do drugs. You've seen that boy. Oh, he probably does do drugs. Maybe now. Sure. He Miles Austin does ecstasy. He doesn't do like real drugs. What kind of drugs do you think, uh, Dak? Dak does. Dak doesn't do drugs. Maybe he should. Dak, Somebody's something's got to fix that he boy. Should. He probably should do drugs because he's probably the most straightest of edges that you can find. Something's got to loosen that boy up in the playoffs. He probably, yeah, I wish he could take smoke a couple blunts before the playoff game. Maybe he he go out there and play with no care. When is the NFL gonna lift that completely? I don't know. I don't think they're ever going to lift it completely, but I think it's strictly uh, during the season thing now. They don't test it in the offseason. No Do you think that as soon as the law goes federal, where it's federally legal, and, that the, the NFL won't give a shit, right? It'll be like tobacco, so they won't be able to do nothing. That's going to be interesting no because, yeah. you know, how do you test that they're not intoxicated on the field? The hell, if they're intoxicated on the field, it's their life, not yours. Or the people that they're running into at high speeds. Yeah, well, if they want to go out there high, that's on them. Interesting. What do you think is the easiest sport to play high? Baseball. Mm. I say basketball. What do you think is the hardest? Baseball. (laughs) Hockey. (laughs) I I just think it'll be easiest because you're just standing around the high field, like outfield when you're on defense, like, Outfielder, it's just probably chill when you're high. Like you're probably out there talking to the people, talking to you some popcorn. Like it's just probably chill. With them. But if you're high and someone's throwing a ball at you 100 miles an hour, <laughs> there's no way you're getting a hit. 
There's no fucking way you're getting a hit because the only thing you're going to think is that ball is definitely hitting me every time. You're going to jump every fucking time. I like that you have it as the same sport. <laughs> Yo, being high is fucking amazing sometimes, and sometimes it's not amazing. Okay, we'll close on this. What is the best job to have while you're high? Taste tester. That's easy. Oh. Cop. What? Cop. Cop? You think being a cop would be fun when you were high? You would no, I didn't say fun. I think it would be the best. Because if you're a cop and you're high, you're most likely not going to pull your firearm out as much. So it's probably a good thing. No, oh, but think about the, if you're a high cop and you actually stop somebody. The paperwork high. Have you ever tried to write high? Have you ever, yeah. have you ever tried to write or That's type how I write high? some good and terrible jokes. Yeah, I'm sure it took a lot longer, though. Like, <laughs> writing or typing while you're high at least takes at least three times as long. Like, bro, like, because you got to focus and make sure you're really typing or writing what you mean. Because you might skip a word because you thought it but didn't put it on the paper. Oh, this happens to be a lot. So don't worry, I ain't, I'm talking from a place of experience here. <laughs> All right, what do you think is the worst job to have when you're high? Uh, mortician or like the grave digger people. That would really? Fuck you up. All right. Oh, I could only do that if I was stoned. Huh? Yeah. Well, think about it. You out there trying to put somebody in a grave and you feel like you, because all you're all, like being high makes you paranoid. I don't care who I says, I don't care what, like that's part of being high. You're all, you're paranoid. You hear some random ass sound or something out there in the graveyard, I don't care who you are, you're going to be like, what the, that would suck to always. See, now doing like, acid and, and working in a graveyard, that mad. would be rough. That would be rough. Well, most people who aren't smokers like me, I mean, I don't really get paranoid no more because what the fuck am I paranoid of? I'm just high and chilling. But most people, that's the number one thing is the paranoia. And you'd be paranoid of hell using a graveyard at 2 in the morning. I'm I think paranoid. the worst job would be an Amazon driver. High? Yeah. I literally love to drive when I'm high. Like, what? Yeah, but the problem with the Amazon thing is you got to be quick on the trigger. <laughs> and I feel like I would be getting lost a lot. Oh, no, not here, man. These Amazon people drive around with their doors open. Yeah. You know? Like, it's just wide doors open. They're just rolling around. But it would suck if you're high because you're not always on your P's and Q's. And Amazon people do get robbed, bro. Like, they be getting robbed. That's kind of a thing around here right now. So, yeah, that would probably be suck being high. Because you don't pay as much attention when you're high. You're kind of relaxed. They've been getting robbed around here. Like, and they've been still in the whole truck. Like, not just, like, a bag. <laughs> a lot of people in the Amazon trucks. Yeah, because they the just leave time. the door open and leave it running in the and usually yeah. double parked. It's like, hop in and go. Yeah. Find I'm a really ride, go. baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, bro, what the fuck are you going to do? With oh, that dude, Amazon? that is the ultimate. All right. I don't want to spoil my future plans here, but I've got a good idea. So we'll have this thing. I'll sign up to be an Uber driver. Okay. You hijack the Amazon vehicle with all the packages. Take it back to the safe house. And then when this Amazon worker comes outside, he's like, oh my God, I need a ride. I'm right there in the Uber. We double down on this person's misery because it's Amazon. <laughs> they just write it off. This person needs a ride. And it's like, hey, this happy, helpful Honda person is just right here for you. I'll wear a blue shirt. I don't care. And be like, look, I got this Uber right here for you. There you go, baby. Let's get all the money. Then we have an alibi. Because I was like, listen, man, I was out Ubering. My man was out door dashing. What are you talking about? <laughs> I like it. I man. think that's our next endeavor is hijacking Amazon. Amazon. And then... Uh, we, we unbox. Back. See, that'll be fun. It's like presents on Christmas because then we do the unboxing and we have all these random items. So it's not like we're going to get caught by selling this stuff on the internet because it's not like we have like 20 of the same thing. We're going to have a bunch of random stuff, which is good because we don't want to have a paper trail of any of this shit. Number two, we just got to take the serial numbers off of all of these things because we don't want to get it traced <laughs> back to us. 
I'm just saying, and if I'm given the Uber rides while this stuff is getting jacked, it's bulletproof. As long as nobody knows about our plan, Mike, it's bulletproof. (laughs) So on that note, I'm going to get the schematics going. You have a good week. Get your driving gloves fitted. So we got this high stakes game on the road. And if anybody who's listening to this decide they're going to take up on this idea, then you owe us. You owe us a portion. Don't do it anywhere near Springfield, Virginia, or Los Angeles, California, because they ain't going to come looking for you. They're going to come looking for us. And we ain't got shit. We ain't got shit. (laughs) We will not be your patsy, but you can cut us in on the deal if we have to go through some interrogation. Because we don't snitch. No snitching. But we will get paid. Make no mistake about that. Our word is worth something. So if you want to see our hijacking hijinks, go ahead and follow us on Instagram. You can follow us at Black Irish Pod. Follow Mike at Black Irish Two One Three. Myself at Brendan McCorkle Comedy. And do us all a favor: be good to yourself. Be good to others this week. You never know. Be good to your animals if you have them. We don't know how long these fuckers are gonna live. I love you, Mike. I hope you're good this week, dude. Man, you have a good weekend, Rocco. I love you if you're still back there, bro. Hope he all well out of the room a while ago. All right, homie. I love you. We'll catch you next week. I right, bring it in. Wrap it up. Peace. Bow.